everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and I'm back to be able to show you guys how you can paint this adorable jack o fly at home for yourselves, step by step, fully explained every part of the process. So even if you're a very new or beginner painter, you can find that you're going to get a really good level of success with this project. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. His job is to track me with all the cameras, mm -hmm. make sure that I don't just wander too far afield. And forget that I'm teaching an art lesson here. And also he tries to catch your questions if you're here for the live stream during the live stream. If you have a question, put those all in caps. Um, not only will John be looking for those, but the moderators, those are the people with the wrenches will be looking for those. So sometimes they know where a link is or what an answer is because they've been here a really, really long time. Sometimes John will ask me a question live on the show and you might get your question asked right here. And sometimes after I'll find a question that I like and I'll answer it in the comments. That's actually a very important part of our process because that's our back and forth on how I'm able to help you get the best possible result in your art experience. You guys ready to look at the materials? They're so ready. All right. So this is the gorgeous image that we're doing today. Let's put this over here to okay. the side. I have an 11 by 14 inch um, kind of canvas panel board that I get at uh, my local little art craft store that's like closest to me. And they come in little packs. I am going to show you how to put the butterfly on here. But I also have some wishes. We like to put wishes on some of our live shows. And right now with Hurricane Michael, we have a bunch of those. So the first and foremost wish is to help make sure that there's help and support and healing uh, for the victims of Hurricane Michael. Support to the recovery crews, uh, strength to the utility and service crews, safety for all of us in the future where it comes to hurricane safety. As a person who lives on a coastal city, that's when I feel very deeply. Wherever you live in the world, if you're on a coastal city, I hope you and your family are safe. Um, good news. This is a really important one. If you're waiting here from somebody who was in the path of the hurricane, I hope that you get some good news and find out that your friend or family member is okay. So those are our wishes of positivity on this canvas to those that are out there. Over here I have my paint. Today I'm going to be using Mars Black, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Red, Titanium White, Thalo Blue. This is an extra tube of Titanium White. Now, if you have trouble getting fine lining, you can use something like this. This is Lamp Black by uh, Holbein Paint. It's a fluid paint that can help you, but I'm going to demo how to do it with the heavy body paint. I'm going to be painting on my timber pad today, and you guys actually get to see me pop a new one. I really like this. Uh, these are paper palettes. They're disposable. Um, this is the only one that has the wood look, and I initially bought it on a novelty just to see, and then I've full-on fallen in love with it. So <laughs> it's my new obsession. They make a bunch of really cool ones, like ones that you hold and really safe glass ones. It's glued on three edges. Which is really nice, actually, if you're very vigorous in painting like I am. When I open these, generally what I do is I pull the little top lid. See, this is the three edges. Three edges. And then they have more info about their palettes if you needed to know more and all the kinds that they have. I always pull that out and put that aside. Now, I have to say, I have never around. seen anyone be so excited about three glued edges. It makes a big difference in my life. I'm kind of a crazy, enthusiastic person. The things can get away from me easily. No, just, just saying that there was dinner conversation over that there were three glued edges. Three glued edges. I just have to say, I thought that was funny. I'm sorry. I was very, very excited nice. about that. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I changed it to another topic. <laughs> you know, you find something new, you get really enthusiastic. <gasps> oh, my. I'm going to have to come. I'm going to have to adjust my butterfly now. Oh, oh, that's, oh, gosh darn it. No, 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 you don't. Because watch, remember our trick? Oh, yeah. Rotate the palette. Rotate the palette. Don't rotate the butterfly. Rotate the palette. Okay, yeah. thank you for, uh, I will watch for that now. I'm sorry. I just got I just happy. Put it up. You put uh, it up just as I couldn't get it up in time. It was my fault. I'm going to put out some white right now. Um, so my thing here is I'm just going to put out the blue and white right now simply because I, there's no reason for me to be drying out. Acrylic paint can dry really fast, and there's no reason for me to be drying out the rest of my paint while I'm painting in the background. Let me show you how you can sketch in your butterfly, but good news, as per the usual, we do have a traceable. You can find that traceable in the description below. There's a link to it, and you can take that and transfer it on your canvas, and no, that is not cheating. No. That is like a thing artists have to know how to do. There's lots of transfer methods in art, and the reason that that's out there and projection and all that is because we all use it. 
because art materials are expensive and that's not the place I want to be working out my thoughts. <laughs> All right, so here is my canvas. Now, if I were to take my hand, my hand is here. I come down a little bit below that. I'm just making sure that I've got room for antenna. And I'm gonna put my little fingers here, my two little fingers there, and I'm gonna make a little stop at the bottom. And that lets me know if you have giant hands, Hey babe, what you doing? <laughs> if you my, have giant my butt, my switcher hands. broke. So I was, yeah, I was I like, saw that. you were all under the desk. <laughs> oh yeah, I was still doing it. If you have giant hands, um, that may throw off your measurement. So just to give you an idea, uh, that's three inches. My hand is about three inches, and then from the bottom here, I will flip it over so you guys can see that. That is about an inch and a half. So that lets you guys know that's the space that you would want around your little butterfly. Now, to do the little head, you would make like a nice little circle and be like, that's his little head. Then you do a long, squishy circle, right? And that's his little body. And then I like to do a nice little leaf shape for his little, I think that's a thorax going down to his little bum bum. All right. And things on my painting yes, show, they tend, to, they tend to either lose a bunch of weight or gain a bunch of weight. But we'll see how he does. Yeah, sorry, I was making a lot of noise. Just half my switcher just stopped working. I was like, that's why I was making all that noise. I want to come up to the corner up here. I want to leave a little room for my wing. I don't want to leave a ton of room, but I want to leave a little room. I'm going to put a mark on the same opposite side up there. Then at his little shoulders, I'm going to make a little line that comes right there and another little line. This is just Kids Chalk by Crayola. I got, you know, I get it at the CVS. It's pretty easy to find. I'm going to come to his little mid body. I'm going to make a little line right here. And then we're just going to arc a little chalk line to this. And I like to go scallop, 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 and into the body. And that's how I get that little butterfly in. So if you're wondering how one draws the little butterflies, that's how one draws that in. Scallop, scallop, scallop. And then that scallop got skinny, so I'm going to make that scallop a little bit better. Because, you know, it has to look like you can catch some wind there. Now on the bottom here, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna make another little scallop. Each scallop gets a little further out from him. Come right there to the thorax, go scallop, scallop, scallop. So right here, about there is where his butt is. And there's that one there. So we're gonna scallop, 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 scallop. Just kind of like those little wing segments. And that'll help us segment out his wings. Once we know where he is, I'm gonna take my Today, I expect to use a 26 uh, Bright by Ruby Satin, a number eight uh, Art Sherpa Cat's Tongue, a number four Round by Art Sherpa, and a couple of my monogram liners are put out. This is all I expect to use on this painting. I'm gonna get my uh, big brush and get some water on there. I just dip in, not above the ferrule, and I drag off. If you guys are trying to help your brushes live a long, long time, don't leave your brushes in water. And what I mean by that is don't put them in water and even walk away for 30 seconds. When you're using the water, you wanna drag it off and make sure you're not constantly putting water above the ferrule where it's just sitting there because it does get down into these brushes across every line pretty easily. And this will help your brushes last longer. I'm gonna come here and just make sure that this is cleaned up a little bit before I get into my yellows and oranges. Right, so here we go. I'm just sort of cleaning up that edge. I don't want even that amount of blue to get in. They can wipe off on my paper towel into my orange paint. So that's why I'm bothering to clean it up. Now you can just use sidewalk chalk for this. This is basically sidewalk chalk. This is just chalk chalk. This is just regular Kids old, chalk. And that won't affect any of the color or the paint? Well, if I went over this with a yellow, this could get into my yellow and make it a little bit green. And that's why I'm cleaning it up just a little bit. But I'm going to be painting blue over the back, and that's why I decided to go with blue. Gotcha. So it's not too big of a deal. We just not be a too wary. big of a deal. Now I'm going to take my blue, and I'm going to load it on both sides of my brush, and I'm going to get a little of my white into that, and I'm going to make not a sky blue, but lighter than my phthalo blue. Let's call this a denim blue. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to just paint the whole background in blue. Now, I found that um, if you want that perfectly smooth kind of printmaker's finish where the brush strokes aren't showing, two coats is what it takes to get you there. Mm, Even yeah. with Pro Paint, it's good to do a couple coats. If you're looking for that printmaker's finish. 
where it looks like you silk screened your canvas or lithographed it. Yeah, if you want a super, super even finish, but if you know, I kind of like it when you see a little bit of brush strokes and some, some sort of like a... I do too. We call that painterly, painterly. and that just means I'm not hiding how I made it. Yeah, it's, you know, you, I, I like your good craftsmanship, but not, I don't feel like it has to, you don't have to hide the material you're using. Right. And I kind of tend to agree with John, but I understand we all have different styles and preferences. Mm -hmm. So I just bring that up because I always get asked that question. How do I get rid of all the brush strokes? <laughs> Another thing you might do is if you're trying to get rid of all the brush strokes is make a bigger mix of the blue color you want in the background and make it very uniform. I like to do it as I go because, again, I like to show that I painted this. That's sort of my goals. Hashtag painting goals. <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> Coming along and painting this all in blue. I think that's the most relaxing part of painting is when you get to paint in a whole area and just enjoy the act of using the brush on the surface. Isn't that fun? So fun. You know, I think that is a really important thing. Just in being in the moment of enjoying the act of the material and the, and the process. You know, I find that sometimes I'm so caught up in the material science or the tech, you know, that like, is this the right brush? Am I doing it the right way? That I forget to just go, it's really cool and fun to just spread a little paint on the can or panel or <laughs> rock or whatever it is I'm going to be. Yeah. That my. You're, you're correct. It's just fun, man. It's just fun. You know, sure. It probably makes the world a better place, too, and it certainly makes it more beautiful, but there's so much to be said for it's just fun to paint things. I was doing uh, coloring pages with my uh, littlest today, and she just likes coloring things. It's just fun. Yeah. Who doesn't like crayons? Man, crayons are awesome. Grown-up crayons are called gelatos or neo-twos. <laughs> <laughs> Although Karan Dosh Neo 2, grown up crayons. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I really, really like the adult crayons. Yes. But I also, I've also gotten an appreciation for the Crayola variety. Oh, yeah, very much. Just because, I mean, just laying down some is it wax conti. You're just a little, yeah, just, they're kind ow. of like a wax pet crayon. It's really rather nice. Uh, you can just, I mean, they stick to just about anything. It's crayon. <laughs> There's some really cool fine art that was done with crayons, and it's just gorgeous. Like, you can't even say, like, well, it's a crayon, so it doesn't do fine art. Fine artists do fine art. <laughs> That's how that happens. It doesn't, you know, we make material decisions based on our goals, but that doesn't mean, like, you know, it's always, like, a pretentious decision. Well, I have to say. Banksy's my current favorite fine artist. So I I know he that's is. That's got to say something about you know something. <laughs> By the way, when you're if you do search John's favorite current fine artist, uh, do that on Save Search because some of the stuff he has is some pretty intense commentary. Th that's very true. But I'm like he likes the little girl with the balloon that just got shredded at Sotheby's, and uh, he enjoys his more whimsical work. That's a good way of putting it. There's, yes, because <laughs> these are. I like many artists, they have a big voice, a big vocabulary. Well, I just had, a, you know, I'm so crazy about Andy Goldsworthy, and yeah. I loved his Rivers and Tides video, and I, I loved know. that whole entire natural collection. Now he's working in blood, though, and so uh, yeah. i got to revisit that feeling. <laughs> it's like, sometimes <laughs> it changed. It went sometimes. a different way. It used to be water and rocks <laughs> <laughs> and some leaves. Now it's other stuff. So I'm not saying it's not fine art. It just it went a different direction for me you know Broncuzzi yes he's dead very safe to talk about his work it, it is because he's not going to come up with a new collection that freaks <laughs> everybody right. out we're pretty safe he's got some big monolithic people really cool sculpture highly suggest him if you're familiar with art history think about this Maplethorpe used to take pictures of flowers well that's good I like flowers. can you imagine that collector base having that moment they're like oh this is new <laughs> they're expressive they have a lot to say there and none of it's flowers oh the, the volume must be really low is it it i'll turn it up a little bit. sorry 
So, you know. Sometimes it gets messed up. You get that background painted in. And then, before you want to do your oranges or your yellows, your bright colors, you definitely want to make sure that your blue is dry. And that um, sometimes it's even nice to switch water because blue can gray oranges. Mute it down a bit, which is great when you want it, but not ideal when you're trying to paint something bright and vibrant. <laughs> so you could do this. <laughs> it is the non-color shifting fan, although the fan does color shift. The fan does color shift, like it's got lights. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a non-color shifting air mover. Air movers are so good. It actually works okay. But and I'm going to go ahead and do my hair dryer because we got to move it along. I just had to be silly. Just... Also, that's there in case I get hot. Okay. <laughs> so while she's doing that, I'm going to say, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. It's really awesome. Sorry, my uh, microphone was turned down there. It's a, you know, live production. So mistakes happen. Sorry. But I love that you guys are all here. There's a lot of you guys. So thank you for coming and hanging out. Um, you know, we love, love, love you guys. Thank you for coming and celebrating this time and kind of, you know, it's not very, you know, I, I, I think this is a special thing when we all get together and paint. Like this. So thank I you think I'm going to lead by example and hit a second coat on there because even mine's a little streaky. Yeah. Okay. So lead by example or something my dad would say. <laughs> my dad is cool though. So it's okay that I quote him. It's not going to take a lot. I'm just going to. Quick hit it with a second little coat. Little. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's going to make a difference. I, I'm not going for the printer's finish, but I still want it to be a more buttery, fuller, rich coating. And I want to have less of the canvas or surface visible to me. So that's what I do. I just, you'll notice that when you do a second coat in painting, Oftentimes that the paint glides and moves over the surface much easier the second time around. That's something people always point out to me like, wow, it's a lot easier to paint over. And that's just something I want to say, like whenever you're um, deciding to paint over a surface, you don't actually strictly have to use gesso to do it because acrylic sticks to acrylic just fine. The only reason to use the gesso over a previously painted surface is to give yourself a white uh, background so that you don't have any color influence from the underpainting. Just a question I was answering earlier today that is on my mind. See, I read all your questions and I think about it. And then I think, what video can I make to explain or teach about this? I'm just making sure that in the link in the description down below that the properly linked event and traceables page is all there. So you can go there and find the traceable and all of the materials that you might need to have a good time with this party, which is on October 13th. Wow. <laughs> this is kind of awesome. Thank you guys for being so understanding about my shoulder this 13 days of Halloween. That was a real rough setback. But, you know, you hang in and you just keep painting. Just keep painting. Just keep just painting. Keep painting. So I you doing that. I will say... Yes, so I'm just updating all the links in the description down below. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening on our website. Definitely take the time to go check it out. Um, you'll find out there on the page today, I think. Let me see if I can push a button and make it appear. Oh, not that button. That button. So there's a difficulty meter where you can go out and you can rate the difficulty of the paintings that we're doing. You can uh, upload a picture uh, of your painting down in the, note, in the comments at the bottom. Um, you can find a link to the traceable and all sorts of fun stuff up there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just agreeing with whatever you say. It's That's so like awesome. what I do. You're so agreeable. I can be. I can be disagreeable too. I think everyone Not that can. disagreeable, but I can be dis as My teenage daughter would swear I'm very disagreeable. So I'm having a lot of fun with her because we're power watching the Goldbergs. <laughs> yeah. And it's very interesting because she really, really thinks the mom is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> She's like, all she does. That's all she does. I'm like, you want to be stalked like that? She's like, yes, I'd love it. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's funny because I grew up with a flavor of that mom. You have that mom. John has that mom. His mom is that mom. <laughs> which My is, mom was not that mom. Which is why I think. Um, 
I guess Honey and Ma'am get along so well. Yeah, I think my mom's more like Daria's mom. <laughs> it's more that. Which is, I guess, why you're more like Daria? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> As you wear your flannel shirt. <gasps> I may have had a Daria period of my life. It's hard to say. That's right. We all went through things, right? We all go through stuff. So I'm going to get my brush wet and make sure that I have got the excess water off. Now I'm going to dip in, drag off the extra, and I'm going to load with my yellow first. Yellow, 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 yellow. And then I'm going to grab some of my cad medium here. Yellow, 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 yellow. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm just going to come in and paint this first little bit of orange. I'm going to paint this whole thing orange. Can I just orange it up? Yeah, because I found with the oranges and yellows, whenever you're doing something with a lot of strong, strong oranges and yellows, sometimes it's nice to start with a base. A base orange. A base orange. Base it up. You know, my hair dryer is crowding me. It's crowding up on me, John. I'm sorry. I, you're not really responsible for it. I'm just informing you of my problems. <laughs> Just a nice light little color to begin with. Just a nice light little color to begin with. And that's going to make it really nice when we do the blending over it so that it stays very bright and saturated, which is kind of what we want on something like this, is a very bright and saturated character. And come right on in using the tip of my brush that come along the tip and drag it around. And he, got, he gained some weight right there. Gained weight. I'm also going to be doing so much black lining, that's going to make a big difference as well. So much of it. So put in all those little veins and stuff. Lots and lots. Come along here and just make sure it's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. And then more orange. Like you do. Like you do. Like some of us do. I'm going to turn this on the side, throw John off. He doesn't know what I'm doing. I don't? No, I don't know. You're pretty what, good at What would unless happen? Unless you're under the desk, you're pretty darn good at following me. I mean, like if you were right there doing something crazy, like, you know, trying to, you know, paint on the side and you needed me to, you know, rotate it, I think I probably could help people <laughs> like that. Would that be okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it made me choke on my coffee so i hope everyone's doing really well while we're painting him in uh bright orange does anybody have any questions oh, out uh, there there, in the there were YouTube verse uh what? oh is there a possibility there will be a one hoot dracula painting in the foreseeable future there is the possibility um what I will say is I added some fangs to the skull just in case I just don't get another chance. I've got to be careful how much I load onto the calendar. Yeah. I've got the calendar up with what I'm absolutely 100% sure I can do before we go to pinners. Um, if I get, uh, I had this idea of this really cute one hoop project that one could do with kids that kind of went with a cute mummy. Um, if it comes to fruition, I'll put it up. Fingers crossed. Mm. As it is, I'm like frustrated that I missed out on my 13 days of Halloween. Kelly was asking if she buys the non-gessoed boards because they're a little cheaper. Yeah. Should she put a layer of gesso on them? Okay. Well, it depends on where you buy them for. So if you get mason board from the hardware store, what you really actually want to do, and I know this is a, is a topic of drama right now, but what you actually want to do is put an isolation coat down, which is not glue. That would not be glue. It's something like a GAC 100. It's a sealant that doesn't allow anything from the substructure to come up into the surface painting. And then you would just sew it if you want that tooth for your paint. Um, if you buy from an amazing company like Ampersand, they really kind of make sure that you don't have anything junked up in your substructure so you won't get structurally induced discoloration. So you can just paint it raw on wood if you want to. Acrylic sticks to like everything that acrylic sticks to. It can struggle on glass. You know, if the, if the surface is non-porous and doesn't give it anything to, to grip, it can struggle. But as long as it can affix and bond to it, you're okay. Your cool. only issues are always about is what, uh, is what underneath coming up and leaking up into the painting above. And that can actually happen. 
like in a scary, scary way. And it shows up like six months later, so you don't even get to see it right away. You're like, you'll just be looking at your painting in the living room going, wait, what? There's a lot of folks here excited about the Pennywise. I am excited about Pennywise. I really, really wanted to make sure I got that on. And here's the thing. I feel like with a vampire, that's a year-round character. <laughs> we can paint a vampire any time of the year. You could have like a winter Christmas vampire. I mean, they're just around, right? They're immortal. But Pennywise has a season. <laughs> I don't know. That's just some weird reasoning I've ha I have happening in my brain. So you can see I'm using my brush stroke. Can you see I'm curving my brush stroke to just fill this all in orange and I use it to sort of follow the direction of the wing. So if you look at the brush strokes, they're kind of like already implying the direction or the growth of the wing, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna dip in the water. Actually, I might wipe off a little of my pigment, then dip in the water, get about one drop and load right up with my gorgeous, beautiful, add red and I'm going to come to the edge of my wings and just put in a darker color here and I'll just brush that back it's kind of nice to run that little dark color here painting butterflies is super fun even when they're jackal flies actually I would be like if this were a real butterfly I would be so excited that would be my favorite butterfly and uh I would be like like, I would have shirts of it, and then have pictures of it, and screensavers of it. That's, like, even better than a monarch, isn't it? Same. I mean, like, if they only came out during Halloween, that would be a cool world. I would enjoy it anyways. <laughs> so when I'm right here and I'm wanting to do a nice soft edge, I'm just going to come on the edge of these bristles, and I'll just very softly kind of dust this out so that the edges are not too hard or too visible and then I'm going to come right there I'm going to dip and I'm going to go do the other side like you do painting that other side that that red and you can see how that just picks up the pops up the color doesn't it do the same thing any other questions while we're doing the same thing on this wing oh yeah at least go back up here there was a few I was just watching you paint actually <laughs> oh, like, You're the best. Go? It was Lila was asking about Inktober, and I just can't remember what they were asking. Well, Inktober is awesome if you're doing Inktober. My friend Stephanie B is doing Inktober. What what exactly is Inktober? Inktober is a really wonderful art challenge. Uh, oh, of course, the one time someone asked me, I forget the guy's name. It started by this artist. They wanted people just to work on their, um, you know, working with ink and drawing more. So I challenged people just to do a little uh, rendering every day. It's free. You can participate. There's a lot of groups around it. A lot of YouTubers do it. There's different little prompts. You can follow the prompts. Uh, Honey's doing it. My oh. daughter's doing Inktober. She's got a whole journal. She's going through every day following the prompts. And every day you do a different one. And at the end, you'll have 31 pieces. We're actually going to do acrylic April next year. And we're going to be meeting up every day to do a different little acrylic painting with different prompts. Is that nice. not exciting? Yeah. And the nice thing about Inktober is that it has some giveaways and has some cool stuff associated with it. So it's a pretty cool event. I'm just rinsing out and grabbing some more of my cad red here. Come here and add some more of this nice dark red to this little inside corner wing. Doesn't that seem nice? that's what Inktober is all about. Uh, my favorite, yeah, besides Stephanie Bergeron and Mike Bergeron who are doing some pretty cool stuff for Inktober. I got a lot of friends that do really cool stuff for Inktober. I'm also really fond of Mary Doodles. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she's still doing Inktober, but she's done some of my very favorite Inktobers in the past. Yeah. You know, there's all these young up and coming artists right now. She's actually pretty young herself. But uh, she's my fave. Just because she's super whimsical and her pieces go places that are so, like, surprising. You know, it's just a nice little mix of music and watching somebody doodle. That's the name Mary Doodles. Because mm -hmm. she doodles. And you can watch her do that. <laughs> Which I have done. <laughs> In the past. I'm just taking that dark color and, like, feathering it out. And then you can even come and... 
to just make sure that the tip of your wings are, are very saturated, I think, is a good idea. So I'm really making sure they're super saturated. So far, so far saturated. Now on the little monarch butterfly, I'm gonna dip one drop. I just took the toe of my brush, just dip the toe, and I'm gonna work the water through that paint to improve the flow. See how I worked that through? Boom, 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 boom. I just did George of the Jungle. Did you catch that, John? I did. Brandon Frazier was like really good as George. Now, you're using a mix of paint brands today, aren't you? Yeah, you can always mix up paint brands, guys. You don't have to like, you can have your favorite white, your favorite blue, your favorite yellow from different companies. Acrylic paints, when they're good companies, they should be able to work together. There's, it's funny, someone just said, I just saw the pumpkin and the butterfly. They just saw, they're like, oh, it's a pumpkin. Yeah, this is your original design. This is inspired by a tattoo piece. This is, but, but you, you came up with this pumpkin in the face and, and this is really clever. Oh, thank you, babe. But I, I would say this is definitely inspired by this, this, the tattoos and, and stuff like that. But I have permission. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. Taking it a different direction, seeing where I could take this idea and expand on it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I. Yay! <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come along his edge here. Boom, 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 boom. And it's fantastic. This is so it's an interesting really thing. If you get like inspiration from tattoos, like say you see a really great tattoo out there online and everything, um, or, you know, from like a website that has artwork for that, just like photographers, you still have to get rights if you're using substantial elements or inspiration from the original artist. Mm -hmm. That's just something you should know. That's true. And right. if I'm going to load my brush up on both sides with my yellow and get just a smidge of the red so it goes a little orange, but it's mostly closer to the, to the yellow. I want it to be super bright. See how we're making it super bright? I do. Super bright. I'm going to take this opportunity to say if you want to use the rights of, uh, of Cinnamon's image, you can, you can check out the link in the description down below for labs. Yes. Where you can use this image in your sip and paint or other craft-related yes. business. Yes. Sorry, I will this just will be available for our labs partners. I would just take the oh, since you said licensing, I'll take the plug. <laughs> <You'll> take the <laughs> plug. <laughs> but you know, if you're just giving this to friends or family, or oh, yeah. uh, selling it just you know in private sales, okay, you know, that's fine. If you check the bottom of all my videos, it I talk about um, how you can use these images and what's cool, and you'll find most stuff is cool. Yeah, shower curtains all over Amazon, not cool. No, that's <laughs> now, ours. I'm I gotta stop that. Curtain. I wish I wish someone would just contact us and say we would like to sell shower curtains with your images, and we will work with you to do so. <laughs> I don't I love walking up, waking up and seeing like three hundred images on like you know certain overseas websites. It's not my favorite. I was like, does why don't you just license them from us? We're reasonable people. We're so cheap. <laughs> We're so reasonable. <laughs> We're sipping anything. We're not we're just like okay, anyways. Oh, sorry. We digress. Yeah. The business of art is not what we're doing today. Today we're feathering the <sighs> toes. So you can see I'm taking this light color and I'm putting it into this inside of the wing and I'm delicately brushing this out. My pressure isn't very uh, hard. I'm not pressing the brush hard into the canvas. I'm just lightly working it out. And I'm using the tip of this brush, you know, to kind of like blend like with an uneven line. Can you see how that line is super uneven and and soft. That's how I'm getting that nice effect. Now I'm going to get a little more, uh, just a little more right in there so I can stay, you know, bright orange. I'm not trying to be like super saturated yellow. And I'm going to come like right down the middle of the body and I'm going to make sure that I imply that this has got a higher highlight as it would, right? As she would or he would. I won't be gender specific about this butterfly. I don't know this butterfly that well. <laughs> Dipping in my water for one drop. I'm loading my brush, flipping, flipping, flipping. And you can see by working these two areas between each other, I can easily find. John teases me a lot that I spend a lot of time mixing color in my palette, but I'm looking for the color. Well, it's what you got to do. It's what you got to do. So now you can see the second coat really, really saturates that color, doesn't it? You know, if they called you by what you do, you guys would be mixers. 
<laughs> mixers. Well, I might be a mixer. I, I tend to get a little mixy. Some people are, are more like out of the tube and they paint directly. Well, they, well maybe I'd, I'd, I'd have to get video and watch them. Well, no, the, the, the crumb that we had in the house, that was, that was a direct painting. He had a methodology of direct painting. So sometimes artists do that. They just paint right from the tube. That's very interesting to see, but I like to mix my colors. I don't really want to own that many tubes of colors. That's not true. I actually shop all. <laughs> I, you have a, you have a, 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 That's a not true. I venerable so horde much. of paint. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. And this is a cool thing. I can create a darker color in my red. I can either use my blue or my black in here. I'm going to actually get my black, and I'm going to get just on the toe of my brush. See, it's just the tip, but I don't want that much. You can even wipe off on your paper towel. I'm just going to darken my red a smidge. I want it to look kind of like a brick red instead of such a bright red. And I'm going to come on the outside of my little butterfly body, and I'm going to just brush in, down brushing it in this little dark value. And it can be like deeper where, you know, it might be coming across as little, little butterfly shoulders. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got a little highlight here. Let's go. Just brush this in. I'm just adding this dark value to the outer edges of him. That's what we're doing is these outer edges. Do you have another question? Yeah, you know, I was, uh, what is your favorite thing to draw to draw with besides acrylics? To draw with? Or, you know, I, I think generally. The, watercolor. You, watercolor. Is my second favorite medium. Actually, used to be my first favorite medium. So it's kind of actually been a switch the last few years where I've taken, you know, my acrylics have become my primary medium. The watercolor used to be my primary medium. I did. Yeah. I actually kind of. He did. Sometimes he asks me questions he knows the answer for. I mixed another little bright orange here. I'm just making sure that I want the center of his body to just be beautiful and well painted and bright. See how he did there? I do. So that gives him a nice little space that we Ooh. can add a highlight to. That's a very on fire pumpkin y He's butterfly. on fire. The camera should be struggling. I'm going to put just another little pop at the tips of these wings with this bright color right here because you just can't. The whole point of painting with cat is to brighten it up, right? And just make that as pretty as you can. Pretty as you can. Put all that bright color, pretty as you can. You can get gorge, 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 gorge. So that's all we need to get that base. Now I'm noticing here I've got a little bit of white, but I'm not too worried about it yet because I'm going to have to take my black and black line him. To do that, I'm going to need to rest my hand because my hand's not that steady. And he's going to need to be dry. I'm going to dry it, and John's going to look for a question to ask before he black line. Okay. So I will come over here and say, uh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. There's an awful lot of you guys today. And don't forget, oh, I will say, when you're drying your surface, make sure that you use an air mover like we were earlier. And try not to use heat, because heat can induce color change and color shift in um, student paints or, or budget paints. Um, in your pro paints, not so much, but uh, do keep an eye on that. And uh, I'm going to scroll up here and look for questions for the Sherpa because y'all are chatting and having a nice time, but I have not caught too many questions, you know, about things that are going on with the painting. So I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch. And yes, I saw that uh, uh, Jake, let's see here. I'm going to go back to where I thought, oh, there was Jake Parker for October.com. You can go check that out there. Uh, for more information on that, I will. Oh, there she comes. Your audio back on. I need a hotter coffee. I a hotter my coffee. Good cup. All right. So they were asking. Uh, the last Cindy just popped up as I'm about to slide away from the desk, and she said, "Can you use wax paper for a palette?" And can you talk about that in general? So, um, here's the issue with wax paper: is it's really actually not that uh, water resistant, and there's so much moisture in acrylic paint. Um, sometimes it actually gets wrinklier and more problematic than you think. The plastic wrap on your, you know, if you get the panels, that's actually a pretty good palette. I've seen people do aluminum foil over another surface. Um, 
it's not ecologically the most wonderful, but you can do a polystyrene plate. Um, what you cannot do under any circumstances is uh, pull glass out of a picture frame and use that. I have seen artists recommend it. I have seen teachers recommend it. And that is one of the things that's, that's like right up there with using torches with paint. That's a hot button with me. And what you'll find my hot buttons are about uh, your life. So if somebody's endangering your life, I will get a little outspoken about it. And I can tell you, because I used to frame our work and I used to do stuff. Oh, this is nice. So, so this here, see this? This is not sponsored. I'm just telling you this because I feel this strongly. You, you need, sure you send us that to look at. they sent us this to look at, but I, this is a very good example. This is tempered glass. So when I'm using a palette, right? If I want to use something that's reusable, the reason I have to use tempered glass and every framer in the room, if there's any are going to tell you right now, uh, picture frame glass, glass that comes out of that is not safe. You need safety equipment. It can break on you out of the blue with no warning. Like a grenade. Like a grenade and really cut up your hand. I have been injured very, very deeply, even using safety equipment in the past, just doing framing. It is dangerous as all get out. So you want something like this that yeah. says tempered glass. I like this company, but you use whatever company you want. You just make sure it's safe. So if you, that's a good investment because you can use that again and again and again and again and easily clean it. You can do what I do, the pill paper pallets. You can use the plastic wrap that's over your uh, your canvas boards. Because you know how there's like three of them in there wrapped. I know this is a big question, but this is like if I can save one person's hand or well-being, I will. And if you see a teacher that tells you it's okay to do that, you tell them, no, that's not okay to say. Yep. You do well, not pull glass out of a frame and use that for a pallet. That's not a tip. That's not a hack. That's endangering people. We'll put a link in the description down below a little I'll later. I'll that strongly. <laughs> no, we'll put a link to, because uh, we're going to, we'll do um, another little video about this maybe later on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm going to, and we're going to talk about this more. Um, but that's my thing. Yeah. You can absolutely use hacks. Just wrap aluminum foil around another thing. That's fine. Uh, all, there's a lot of fine things to do, but that would not be the fine thing to do. I'm going to okay. go get my soapbox I'm okay. Back. I'm off my soapbox. While I'm off my soapbox, I'm going to do a little blendy on the, I just want a little pop of yellow on the bottom wing. So I'm going to get my yellow and I'm going to loosely mix it into my orange. And I'm going to just brush this in because I just want a little more of this. See how I'm doing? I just want some of that in the wing. So I'm just putting that in there because I just feel strongly I want it a little bit brighter than it is. If ever you're looking at your piece and it doesn't please you, um, don't be afraid to make changes. You know, if you're if you're painting along with me, you're painting along with anybody and you need to make some changes, make some changes. Don't be scared. Don't be a scared. Hopefully that's a good tip about the palettes, too. Oh, yes, <gasps> absolutely. Yeah, I just seen that as a tip and a hack on so many like YouTube channels. And I'm just like, that's not OK. What I will. Yeah, that's I not will. Cute. I will absolutely. Um... Also, don't you know, don't do any of the stunts or pranks or things that you see on YouTube. YouTube does not oversee safety in any way. Yeah, no, the, uh, we'll do a whole thing about the glass here in a little while, but. All right, so I just was like, I just wanted to pop a little bit of that yellow feeling in there because I thought that would, you know, kind of uh, brighten up the wing a bit. And you just have to feel like, whoa, that's what I feel or yeah, I'm just doing like lightly streaking through there. I think that'll help his little jack-o'-lantern face feel even. See, it's even better. That's what you do. Try again real fast, but okay. we'll take off. And so just to. To pick up because there's a lot of folks asking if you can't afford uh, a, you know pay uh, like pallet paper or something like that uh, don't worry about it you can use disposable paper plates you could do use disposable um, uh, styrofoam plates and sometimes those are even reusable so uh, I was just telling them not to worry if they if they if they can't afford pallet paper or something like that just you know disposable paper plates just about yeah, anything disposable will work. paper plate is perfectly fine yeah yeah. Saran wrapping stuff is perfectly fine. That cling wrap stuff actually clings on other things um, that can work really well. So don't feel like it's I'm trying to get a, a bougie product in your hands. I'm not. I'm just trying to tell you that whatever your solution is, whether, you know, it's a DIY solution or uh, an investment in your studio, just make sure it's one that serves you really well. Yeah. Okay. So here's my thing. I'm going to use, I usually demo using like a fluid paint like this because it's already, you know, thin, the pigment load is high and it's a real easy way. But you guys ask me a lot, like, how can I just use the heavy body paint? I can't go out and buy another paint. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to dip my brush. I'm not going to drag off the water. So I've left 
all three drops, there's about three drops that end up in that brush when I, when I take it fully loaded to the palette, right? I'm gonna come back in, dip the toe. And what I'm doing here is I am thinning the paint. See how I'm doing? I'm making this a fluid viscosity. I'm doing it one drop at a time and I'm thoroughly mixing that moisture through and then I press off with my brush to create that little puddle of thin paint. So I get the thick paint, I wiggle this around, wiggle, 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 and then I press out. So hopefully you guys can see how I can thin my paint pretty easily with my brush and then I'll just rinse it out. And that's what it takes to thin your brush. Make sure you vigorously rinse out. And you'll notice that I always put my brushes to the side here and lay them flat. That's one of the things that I do that helps keep the, length, the life of my brush longer. To do the mouth, I'm going to want to, I'm going to take my white chalk and I'm going to come right underneath his little thorax here and I'm going to make my little teeth a bite down to here and I'm going to come up, down, up, down. I'm going to come over here and go up, down, up, down. Now, to make the smile, I've got to make the partners to these little points, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you've got a partner. So whatever point you have, it needs to have its little partner. So if there's a smile here, it has to have a point here. You can bring it down. It has to have one there. You just want to mirror them. So it looks like if he bit you, he could close his mouth. <laughs> that's what you're going for. If he bit you with his scary face, he could close his mouth. Now, right there in the center of the body, I'm going to do the little uh, cutout triangle. So that's all I'm actually going to worry too much about sketching in because the rest I do by how I build up my black lining, I want to make sure that little triangle is very evenly placed across his little body. So go like that. This would be like if I carved out my little pumpkin nose triangle and I've got my mouth. Those are the two hardest things that I like to get in first. I have my number four Art Sherpa round. And what's nice about this is that it's going to give me a really good line. And I can also do the dip and mix with it as well. I'm going to roll out and get this right on the tip of my brush. I'm going to move my little thing out here. And I'm going to just line very carefully around my little butterfly. So I rest my wrist on the dry area of the painting because that helps me steady my hand. Lots of ways you can do it. That's just what helps me. You can do this any way you need to. You could use a mall stick, very popular among artists, which is a little stick with a little sock stuffed at the end of it. There's a really high-end version of it. It's Italian, but, you know, most people just stuff a stick. I bring that down there. You know, and I know that I'm going to come down to the tip of this, so I can just bring that down. So you can see that I can thin my heavy body paint more than enough to get a nice line. Paint the edge of that right there. <laughs> okay. Oh, hold on just a second. I will be right back. <laughs> Hi, how you guys doing? <laughs> So, so we are live and we work from home and sometimes people come to the door while we're live and then we answer the door, but we don't let our kids just answer the door. So that's why that whole, they're not allowed to get to the door themselves. We have to, we have to look, see who it is. It's okay. Whoever's there, it's okay. All right. So I'm going to thin back out and I'm going to come in, definitely bring a line right across here. I'll bring a line right across there and let's paint in our little triangle nose. Now, any chalk that's left over, we can very easily clean up once the paint is dry, so don't panic about it. And you can see that doesn't make the nose gray or anything. There you go. All right, that was crazy. Someone's at the door. <laughs> yeah, that's right our... in the middle of the show. Wow. It just happens. All right, it does. <laughs> okay, um, resetting my thought process. <sighs> All right, so I'm coming along the edge of the wing here, coming along the edge of the wing, and I'm bringing in, I'm being very careful with the point. 
I'm going to let everyone get settled. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> what we'll do here is we'll take a quick three minute break. No, 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 we're all sure? good. Okay. I'm going to hop off and give a hug and hop back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep lining because we've got this butterfly to get through. I'm getting this outer line done and I'm going to come down here and do, uh oh, someone better get the whoopee away from Twix. She's been, we keep hiding that. This is interesting. Mad, crazy mayhem in the middle of a live. You know, I'm coming along, along the edge of the wing. Here we go. There we go. Just coming along the edge of this wing. Then up, 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 up the wing. Sometimes you have an easier time stroking up and sometimes you'll have an easier time stroking down to keep a steady stroke. And you've just got to decide what is easier on your hand. How do you get your best stroke? And remember that the amount of pressure that you put on your brush really impacts how fine or thick your line is. So if you're putting a lot of pressure, your line's going to get really thick, but if you're not putting very much pressure, it'll stay very, very thin. And that's how you can kind of control that experience. So I've got this here. Coming around the little edge. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm going to touch up anywhere I need to touch up. Now, to get his little uh, eyes in and inside thing, I'll have to try this again because I don't want to drag black paint across. And because I'm so heavy handed with how I rest my hand, I will. Right. Because otherwise my hands will tremor and that doesn't look real great. So I'm okay. going to dry this. So while she's there, thank you guys. Sorry, we, you know, it's a weekend, you know, and we have all sorts of exciting things going on. Just, you know. So thank you guys for your patience and understanding. And check, as I said, link in the description down below. You can find all the stuff that you might need to paint this at home. Uh, and yeah, that's that's kind of that. So I'm going to thin some more of my black paint and load my brush up. So it's got lots of brush and paint in the belly and ready on the toe. And my first little trick to build my eye, this is actually kind of interesting. I come from where this joint is and I make a little curved line. And then next to it, I do another little curved line. Then coming up here, I can join a little curved line into the wing like that. And then it has a little friend that comes up here and follows along the wing and curves. See how that goes? Sort of cool. And that kind of builds this space that I can do my eye in. So then it's easy for me to come out and say, let's do another little curve out this way. And then we'll bounce back this way and bounce back that way. So then I can easily get that eye shape. I can join this into this vein as it wants to and take a couple little veins out here. At this point, this can come out and do some more veining. And kind of went over, so I'll just smooth that out. You just, you just go along and you just make sure that you've got nice veins that make it feel like, you know, your butterfly wings are strong. Might join a couple of lines there. So it's always fun to join. And then when you have that done, you paint in that whole area. Now you've got uh, traceable up there. In case yes. If this is complicated, and this can feel very visually complicated, and don't think that that's you or you can't paint. It takes a while for your brain to uh, let your right brain, your left brain doesn't want to let your right brain be in charge. So it takes a little while for your brain to, to delegate to the areas that handle this stuff a little better. So just use the traceable while you're working that out. Don't feel stressed. And you can use it again and again and again over the same stuff. Once I've done that, I can come and just make sure I have nice thin paint for the next area. And I do the exact same thing on the other side. I just copy exactly what it is. But remember, they're sisters, not twins. 
So they can have a couple little differences and everything's going to be okay. Gotcha. You know, you don't have to like be freaked out or be like, oh no, it's going to never ever work because it'll be fine. And those slight differences actually kind of you know, make it look cool. Actually, they'll help it make it look more real than if you do exact, exact, exact stuff. Smoothing some of this out. And you can always go back and smooth out areas and thicken lines and thin lines. So you've got a little bit of adjustment. Make a little scallop there. A little scallop friend here and a little scallop friend there. There we go. Look at that. We're making all kinds of little little ways that it can work out. There we go. Oops. I'll get that in a second. You know, that was uh, one of the requests we had on one of our last paintings was you painted it without making a mistake and you didn't go over how to repair some of those. Right. So, so let's say I have a, a mistake, like a little black line there. I'll get that in a second. Okay. Let's <laughs> fix it. I'll fix it in a second. First trick of fixing any little boo-boo. And call it a boo-boo. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't be like mistake. Um, sometimes there are happy accidents, like you're painting along and, and you flub something, and and the way that you solve it actually makes an improvement to the overall piece. That does happen. But sometimes it's just a little boo-boo that you have to repair. And in oil paint, that's a big deal. But in acrylic paint, yeah, we're, we, don't, we don't have to do that. We can't fix anything. So just feel like you can get something fixed if you need to. It can take two coats of black on the eyes if you've thinned your paint. So don't feel like, you know, you can't do that. Now up here, I want to do my little antenna coming in, and so I'm going to paint a little kind of dot. I'm going dot. And how I get that is I press the brush down, and then I lift up, and then I'm going to make a little mirror of that on the other side. I'm going to press the brush down and lift up. And then as fine of a line as I can muster, I'm going to take a very fine line down to Mr. Caterpillar face. All right, then I get a little antenna going there with some of the dark little little spots. Now, it can be helpful at this stage to go ahead and put in the black on your on your teeth if you're you got good teeth in. Did you get good teeth? How are they doing on their teeth, Mr. Cooney? I think pretty good. The teeth, are, you know, I really like how you've done the teeth in here. So they and doing it in chalk seems to make it. So you can sort of sketch it in and not have to worry quite so much. A little more complex, I would say. It is, because you're not having to fix, you know, like what you might feel is a mistake in the chalk with so much. You don't have to let it dry, paint it out, paint it back. You've got a, a little bit more forgiveness in that. Now, in my final butterfly, I actually used white lining along the teeth to help them pop. But oh. I'm still going to remove the chalk because the chalk isn't permanent. And I'll put the white paint back when I go to do the lining on the teeth. And hopefully you guys are appreciating seeing that, you know, hey, heavy body paint will do this more fluid painting. I prefer, I enjoy purchasing fluid paint and using that, but it's not required of me. I don't want you guys feeling like things are required if they're not. Sometimes I'll be like, dude, you really need the zinc to get this painting done? And that's because you really need the zinc to get the painting done. But sometimes there's like, many solutions to a problem. And I always want to show you where that's true. Once I get that in, right, it's pretty like it's pretty much just going and coming down here and making little veins. I'm gonna make a little curve there. And let's curve right here. It's sort of fun to do these little curves. I'm gonna come off the tip of this here and maybe make a little curve into it. I'm going to come from the center here, bow back the other way, a little, little implication of a bowing back the other way. And then I'll take this here. Remember, you can always connect the veins. 
You can always connect them. So if you need to show that there would be circulation through something to something else, you can do that. You know what we're doing? Oh, yeah. yeah so you just do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to make sure that I've got a nice little veining there. and Maybe a nice little veining there. A little bit popping out there, maybe to there. There we go, those two could be joined. Just try to keep those lines as smooth as you can. And I might come back and thicken a little scalloping with my black paint. We're nearly done. I can see. Really, it's just going to be me showing you how to fix the boo-boo, thickening up a couple edges along the wings. We just crossed an hour. Did we? I, yeah. This yeah is I think this is going to be about an hour ten tops. And that's just because I'm going to explain how to fix this boo-boo. It's come right along. It's, you know what, it's a happy, fast, happy little painting, right? So I'm going to thoroughly rinse this out, thoroughly rinse this out. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white paint, boo-boo-boo-boo-boo. And I'm just going to come right here, and I'm going to first paint out that there, right? And say I didn't like a line here, you know, I could paint it out too. I'll show you how to remove two. One across the wing and one across the, the blue. So that'll give That'd you some, that'll give you some stuff to look at. While I'm letting all this sort of dry, I'm going to get a little of my white and a little of my yellow. I'm going to come here. And it's okay to get a little red into it to make it orange. We want it to be kind of like a highlight, and I'm going to come across the front of the head. I'm going to just make a few little highlight marks down his little body. Once I have that, I'm going to dry him so I can do the next part. John will get a question. Okay. Shh. Okay, I will go over here and see... You guys were really chatting it up over here. We've got quite a big, quite a few people here. So thank you guys for coming and all joining us. Make sure I don't have too much uh, feedback in my headset there. But thank you guys for coming. Um, I was going to scroll up here. I saw a couple questions about, oh, brushes. Yep. And, oh, how do you get straight lines? She's, uh, uh, off your shoulder doing. Okay. So, do, do, do. So a couple things they were asking, how do you get such straight lines? How is your shoulder doing? What black paint are you using to get such dark straight lines? And okay. just that. So shoulders doing better. Definitely rested it. Uh, definitely did the Arnica, did all, all of the soaks and the icing and it, it really helped. Um, the black paint I'm using in this is actually just the Mars black by whole body acrylic paint. And I, earlier in the video, you can go back to it. I showed how to thin it. So you get a, like really good fluid consistency. I'm just using the number four brush and how I get thin lines is that I thin my paint and I use a light pressure. And steady is because I'm resting myself somewhere. I'm resting on my easel, I'm resting on my canvas, I'm resting somewhere, just trust me. If I have a steady line, I'm resting myself somewhere to steady myself. Think of these things as like little tripods to steady me. But did I miss anything? Nope, I think I got it. Okay, all right. <laughs> So I just got a damp brush and I'm going to just get rid of these little chalk bits because I do want to come back with white lining, but I want it to be white lining, not chalk. So once I have that, that's good. I'm going to put my little eyes in here. Uh, but first I'll fix my boo-boo. So I'm going to go into my blue. I'm going to take a little of my white and a little of my blue and I'm going to make the same color I had in my background. I'm going to come just right here. And just make sure that I paint the same background color in. Covering up that white. Come here and I'll show you what I do there. So just put that out. Get your paint. You don't want any of that blue in there. Huh. 
So I'll take a little of my yellow and a little of my red to get that uh, very bright orange that I had. And I'll come right here. And I'll go back and repair that. So it's really just about coming back with the color and just painting over it. The white helps knock back the black a bit. It's not as noticeable. So if we come back, you don't really see it unless you're really up on it. And then as the paint dries, it'll cover it up more. If it's not covering, you just do a second coat. Now to do the eye, I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna load up with a lot of water. I mean, not a lot of water, a lot of yellow. And so whenever I'm loading this brush, I pull out and I'm actually quietly rotating it in my fingers if you guys don't see it. So it's getting a flip too. I'm gonna go ahead and just get a little of the red in there. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna press the brush in, wiggle it a little bit, and then I sort of pull. And that's how I get that weird little shape. It was a weird thing I did, but it's a thing I like, so I'd like to do it. I'm gonna get a little more, let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna move this because I can't get my, my, my handle's very long, so I have to get an angle that's good. I'm gonna press in and I twist and kind of pull that little seed shape out. Nice way to make a petal too, by the way, guys. Now we have eyes on him. <laughs> He's so cool. Or she. Because again, I don't know that butterfly that well. I'm gonna get my cleanest water. You can also go just go get clean water. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my black, but with my white paint, where I take the water and I incorporate it thoroughly until it's a very thin consistency. Then I'm just working that water through. Wipe off the extra, load up the tip. I'm gonna make a couple stripes here on the little tail. Make a couple stripes up here in the antenna. Oh, you're faster than me. Oh yeah, they're just a little stripes. I just thought they were a cool decorative element that we needed. Go ahead and come here and I like to shore up a little bit of the line shape with this white lining. Oh, it's just a little edging. Just a little edging, and I don't put it everywhere. I just want to show this line here a bit. All right. And then I'm going to just come along the back. And I like to make these little like little dots. A lot of this type of butterfly has these little wing markings. I think it just it confuses birds. This would scare a bird half the time. <laughs> bird would be like, never mind. It'll scare crows off. Yeah, I think it would. This would be a very defensible little marking. And people would probably protect it, like, religiously. <laughs> all right, when that's all done, I'm going to thin out. I'm going to get my brush clean. And I'll go ahead and get a little of my blue. But this time, I'm going to make a super light blue. So it's lighter than my background significantly, but I'm using my fluid paint so I can sign. And I'll just come here using just this brush even and sign my name. All right. I really want to thank everybody for their time today. And I want to send well wishes and healing wishes to everybody who's caught in the path of Michael. Um, we're going to be posting some information uh, for artists for post hurricane stuff. So maybe that'll help somebody in some kind of a way. Sending light and love to everybody out there. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye bye. Bye, guys.